Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, I'm joined here today with uh, Member of Provincial Parliament, Merritt Stiles, as well as School Board Trustee for Toronto, Jen Story. And I just want to talk about something that is top of mind for all parents. Anyone who's got kids, they're worried about their kids going back to school. They're worried about whether the kids will be safe. They're worried about if the, the right precautions are being taken. So parents are deeply worried about their kids being safe. And in that context, we know that the federal government has a role to play to help provinces financially and, and to push for those changes to make sure schools are safe. So we've been calling for weeks for the Prime Minister, for the federal government to step up and be a partner at the, provincial, at the federal level to support provinces with some money so that schools can be safer, so that the extra costs can be shared by the federal government as well. Uh, this is something vitally important. On top of that, we know that with the impact of COVID-19, meaning that there are less women now in the job force, that the participation of women has dropped to the lowest participation in 30 years, that coupled with helps to make sure kids can go to school, we need to make sure there's access to universal, accessible childcare. And so we've been calling on the federal government to provide that support as well. So I'm really honored to be able to talk about this really important issue with uh, Marit Stiles, Member of Provincial Parliament, and Jen Story, School Board Trustee. So to add that context, I'll ask them to step up. But before I do that, just in French, I want to say, uh, c'est tellement important pour uh, les familles, pour les parents, qu'on a des, des protocoles uh, pour uh, s'assurer que les enfants, les étudiants sont sécuritaires dans l'école. Donc, on a demandé que le gouvernement fédéral joue un rôle, uh, donner le financement pour s'assurer que les provinces peuvent mettre en place les mesures pour protéger les étudiants dans l'école. C'est tellement important, euh, on connaît, on, on comprend les inquiétudes des parents et c'est exactement pourquoi on a poussé pour ces, ces mesures depuis des semaines. En, en plus, on sait qu'il y a un grand besoin de services de garde et on a poussé le gouvernement fédéral, on a demandé plus de financement pour euh, aider les, les provinces en, de financer l'accès les, les aux services de garde. C'est essentiel particulièrement parce que les, la participation des femmes dans le milieu de travail est tombée euh, à la pire niveau euh, jusqu'à 30 ans. Donc, on, on, on veut régler ça et pour faire ça, il, on a besoin de financement. Donc, uh, I want to invite uh, Merit Stiles, member of provincial parliament, in this very riding to, to step forward and to share the provincial perspective around kids and, and parents' worries about their kids going to school. Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Jagmeet. Uh, yes, I'm Mara Stiles. I'm the member of provincial parliament for this area, Davenport, and I'm also the official opposition education critic at Queen's Park. So this school, Doosan Junior Public School, is where my children uh, went to school from kindergarten through to grade six. It's a wonderful place, uh, full of lots of great staff who care so deeply about the kids that they take care of uh, and that they teach every day. But what we've heard from across this province, from thousands and thousands of parents, uh, is deep concern and a lack of confidence in the provincial government's plan for the return to schools. Um, mostly, this is with regard to the size of classes. It is the, uh, the large class sizes, essentially a return to status quo classes um, in really unprecedented times. So for months now, months now, we have been calling for the government to in in implement an emergency action plan and particularly to focus on safer, smaller class sizes. Uh, we have not seen this government uh, of Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce take those actions. Um, and we know uh, that today there may be some announcements being made, uh, uh, but without a plan here provincially, without any strings attached, there is nothing to guarantee that this government of Doug Ford is going to actually reduce those class sizes and cap them. So that's what we've been calling for. We'll continue to call for it. I mean, this really is the 11th hour here in Ontario. Uh, schools are going back. Teachers are coming back into classrooms now to set up. Uh, any opportunity to hire additional staff, we are way behind. Uh, there's so much more work that could have, should have been done. And we have all been, all of us here, are demanding that all levels of government make the back to school a priority for months. So um, I'm really proud to stand here today. I will just add that you know any announcement that comes today will be welcome, but when you show up five weeks late with your assignment, you don't expect an A. Uh, we need this government to in Ontario to step up now with a strong plan uh, to reduce, again, class sizes, cap them, uh, deal with the 
distancing issues on buses, which are a major concern across this province, um, and work with those frontline education workers, collaborate in a meaningful way so that we can keep all of our students um, and staff safe. Thank you, and I'm just going to pass it on now to our trustee um, from, the, unless you want to go back to you first, Jimmy, uh, trustee uh, from the Toronto District School Board, Jennifer Story. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's uh, an honor to be here. Um, so uh, every morning for the last month, I'd say I wake up to an inbox filled with emails from very concerned parents. They're worried, they're stressed, they're sad, and they're angry about uh, what back to school uh, is uh, looking like, despite uh, having months to get uh, to a better place. And um, as Marit talked about, uh, here we are, we're at the 11th hour, we're about to reopen and class sizes are larger than we want them to be. Back in July, um, uh, another trustee and myself moved a motion calling on all levels of government to come together for bold and creative solutions, to find space and money for teachers to spread kids out, to keep them safe, social and learning. And yet here we are registering kids, opening our schools, uh, and ushering kids back in the door with class sizes that are uncomfortably large uh, in some grades. Um, it's uh, disappointing uh, that we couldn't have uh, seen this uh, coordination or seen governments come together sooner to do this work. Uh, school boards have been ready, willing and able to lower class sizes, um, to make improvements and enhancements in our schools from day one, all we needed was the money and the political will at all levels to make it happen. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, we are ready as a school board to do whatever we can uh, and we'll continue to deliver uh, as best as we can. But at this point, we're targeting resources to lower class sizes in high risk neighborhoods. All of our communities deserve lower class sizes. Uh, we want to get to that point. We'll continue to work for that. Uh, no matter what, and uh, happy to take any questions. Thanks. And we're ready for any questions, and you can direct them to to either uh, either of the the folks that had spoken as well. So we'll take some questions. Yes. I have a question for Mark. Actually. Yes. So oh, sorry. you jumped way too fast there. Um, Mike Steiner has called on the province to match the, the federal funding that we're expecting to be announced soon. Do you think that's a good idea for the, for the province to match it? Well, look, I mean, I think what's missing here really is ultimately, again, a plan from Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce to reduce class sizes and get that done quickly. Um, and, and nothing can erase that. But so, yes, I think that any conditions we can, that can be attached to any kind of funding that's coming here uh, is very important. Um, we would, you know, I think, first of all, we need to cap class sizes. Um, and uh, certainly we would like to see the provincial government here actually pony up and, uh, and do better than what is their bargain basement scheme uh, to deal with uh, COVID-19 in our classrooms. Thanks. Yes. <coughs> so I would like you to answer in English and Punjabi. Sure. Okay. Put my language skills <laughs> to test. So recently you said uh, if the Liberal government fo follow the commitment to help the women and the marginalized people, you won't, uh, you won't uh, force on the election on, on this fall. So what especially are, uh, what are you looking for them to do and how confident are you they will do it effectively for the community? Uh, certainly. So uh, what we said when asked the question around will we force an election or not, uh, I've taken that question and said, listen, our priority isn't about whether to have an election or not. Our priority has been how can we get help to people? That is our number one goal. How can we help people? And as long as we can continue to fight and get some wins to make people's lives better, we're going to continue to do that. If the Liberal government continues to go down a path where they're focused on themselves, where they're enriching their friends, where they're being caught up in, in fighting amongst themselves and they're hurting people as a result, then we'll look at all options. So that's really our focus. And what we're looking for specifically today is really important. Help to parents to make sure their kids are safe in school. Uh, child care is vitally important. We want to see commitments to really make sure child care is accessible and universally accessible across the country. We want to see help that's really specific towards uh, changes to EI. We know that CERB has been vitally important 
but we want to make sure that it, when CERB ends, that there is a plan in place to give support to all workers. Right now, EI only applies to about 40% of workers. We want to see an EI that is permanently changed to help all workers. So there is that safety net in place. And paid sick leave is vitally important of that as well. And that's something we fought for. So these are some of the, the top of mind priorities. And we want to see a recovery that invests in people, that invests in creating jobs in our communities, at the same time that helps reduce emissions. So things like public transit investments, building more affordable housing, retrofitting, those are some of the things we want to see in the upcoming throne speech. But again, our goal is to fight for people and find out how we can push that as opposed to looking for ways to make the government fall. And then you've asked this in Punjabi as well. Shuru toi sada is COVID-19 the samasya de vich sada focus sada dhyan reya ki apan lokan di madad kida kariye. Sada ohi dhyan reya te har ek masle de vich apan zor paya apan koshish kiti hai ki lokan tak madad mile te sanu maan hai ki apan kafi jit prapt kar sake. ਹੁਣ ਆਉਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਾਂ ਇਹੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡਾ ਮਕਸਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਚੱਲੀਏ ਕਿ ਨਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਧਿਆਨ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਲਿਬਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਸੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਦਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਿੱਤਰ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਨੁਕਸਾਨ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਆਪਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਆਪਸ਼ਨ ਦੇਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰ ਹੈ ਆਪਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਆਪਸ਼ਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਪਾਂ ਓਪਨ ਹੈਗੇ ਹਾਂ ਪਰ ਸਾਡਾ ਮੇਨ ਧਿਆਨ ਹੈ ਸਾਡਾ ਖਾਸ ਮਕਸਦ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਮਦਦ ਪਹੁੰਚਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਮਦਦ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਕਈ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਸਕੂਲ ਜਾਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਉੱਥੇ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਅਤ ਹੋਣ ਸਕੂਲ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਅਤ ਹੋਣ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਪਾਂ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੱਚੇ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਅਤ ਹੋਣ ਨਾਲ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਚਾਰਲ ਕੇਲ ਵੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਦੇਖਭਾਲ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਰਬ ਬੰਦ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਈਆਈ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਾਂ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਦਲਾਅ ਹੋਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਈਆਈ ਹਰੇਕ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਹੋਵੇ ਇਸ ਵਕਤ ਸਿਰਫ 40% ਨੂੰ ਮਦਦ ਮਿਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਆਪਾਂ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਹਰੇਕ ਜਿੰਨ ਵੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੋਵੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਈਆਈ ਲੈ ਸਕਣ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਕੁਝ ਕਿ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਨੇ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਖੀਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਰਿਕਵਰੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਇਕਨੋਮੀ ਚਲਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਲੋਕਲੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ਹਿਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੌਕਰੀਆਂ ਹੋਣ ਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੀ ਨੌਕਰੀ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਕਰਨ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਕਨੋਮੀ ਹੈ ਵਧੀਆ ਹੋਵੇ ਭਵਿੱਖ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਇਨਵੈਸਟ ਕਰੀਏ ਆਪਾਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਜਰ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਚ ਆਪਾਂ ਪੈਸੇ ਦੇਈਏ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਲੋਕਲ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਕਰੀਏ ਨਾਲ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਮੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਲਾਈਮੇਟ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਵਾਤਾਵਰਨ ਦੀ ਰਾਖੀ ਵੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾਵੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਮਿਹਰਬਾਨੀ Uh, we have not had contact with uh, the conservative leader. Uh, I've congratulated him on on winning the leadership, but I want to make it clear that what conservatives have put forward as their approach to the the crisis has been one where they've been advocating cutting uh, services, cutting the programs that families need. They're not in it for people. And particularly with Aaron O'Toole, if we want to be very clear, uh, we're in a pandemic where it's shown that we need healthcare and healthcare has been uh, at the brink. It's been in a crisis. Well, a lot of that is because Harper, Prime Minister Harper, brought in massive cuts to health care. Aaron O'Toole was sitting around the cabinet table when that happened. And then Prime Minister Trudeau maintained those cuts to health care. In a pandemic, we are actually suffering from the decisions of Prime Minister Harper, Aaron O'Toole as a cabinet minister, and Prime Minister Trudeau, who allowed those cuts to continue. That has hurt us directly. And so I don't see the, the conservative government being or the conservative party being the ones that are going to advance what people need that's why we're fighting for people we're going to continue to fight for healthcare and fight for the future you might in punjabi simply that last one too yep, the last okay question. uh yes so erno tool nal meri gal baat nahi hoyi uh te main onu vadaiyan ditta ke oh nama leader baneya par conservative party da menu ni maan menu ni lagda ke oh saadi
Well, well first off, uh, we made the announcement, the media advisory, that we are going to have an announcement on the fact that we need federal funding to support schools. And then a couple hours after our announcement, the government announced that they were going to actually make the funding happen. So one of the things that I guess the takeaway is that I should probably do more press conferences like these <laughs> because we get announcements uh, towards the funding that we know we need. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, we don't know what the government's going to announce exactly. So I, I hope the Prime Minister is hearing us loud and clear that what, what's being asked for by the province, uh, by Mart Stiles as the education critic on the ground, by Jennifer Story, school board trustee, is that there is, uh, there is a real need to see dollars for, uh, that are tied to schools being safer. And specifically what the healthcare experts and what the school experts are saying, classroom sizes. We need smaller classroom sizes. And so the dollars that are being attached, uh, the, the dollars for provinces should be connected to this requirement that it actually go towards making schools safer. And that's something that we want to see. Uh, that's something that parents want to see happen. And that's something that families want to see happen so their kids are safer. That's what we're hoping that this press conference helps us achieve is our kids being safer and parents' fears being addressed. They're worried. And, and we're worried about them as well. You know, Mara's been fighting uh, on behalf of Ontario New Democrats. Uh, Jennifer Story's been raising this issue in the school, Toronto School Board. As leader, I've been fighting for parents who are worried about their kids. We want to make sure that they're safer and they're healthier. Can I ask Mara? Yes. Yeah, we have school boards across this province right now to this day that have plans that they've been presenting to the Ministry of Education here that are being rejected. Still, to this day, with a week, really, before school is supposed to start. So uh, we have a real mess here in the province of Ontario. And you're absolutely right. Uh, we've been in this pandemic state since March. Uh, certainly, we have been reminding the Minister of Education from day one that in addition to dealing with the remote emergency online learning that they were tackling over the sort of spring months, that they needed to focus immediately on the return to school. Because at some point, we know students would be returning to school. How do we do that in the safest way possible? That was, there was a clear path to doing that. It involved collaborating with all levels of government. It involved actually investing in a meaningful way uh, in a plan that would reduce class size numbers. And in many parts of this province, let's be completely clear, Students are returning to status quo classrooms, the same size classrooms they were in when they broke in March, they are returning to in this September. So here we are with a week and a half to go. Uh, we know that the Toronto District School Board trustee behind me, uh, Jennifer Story, brought forward a motion in July demanding that the, that the federal government come through, that the provincial government work together with the federal government to come up with a plan. Uh, we know we've seen federal dollars here in Ontario go, we don't know where. Uh, we're, it, this is a desperate moment now for many families. They're making tough decisions uh, based on a, a, a bargain basement plan that Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce have come forward with, which really is no plan at all. And, I, and the other thing I will add is that Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce have, from pretty much day one, been looking to blame school boards, education workers, and everyone else but themselves for the mess that we are finding ourselves in now. So, uh, you know, any... As, as, as Mr. Singh said, I'm so, so uh, welcome so much, um, you know, how strongly he's been pushing for these supports for our, for our schools and for safer, smaller classrooms. Uh, the federal government needed to step up months ago. Uh, but at the end of the day, Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce must take responsibility for the failure in reopening our classrooms and the lack of confidence that parents are showing uh, across the province in this plan.
Yeah, Doug Ford and Stephen Lecce have put forward uh, a, a so-called plan um, that doesn't take into account um, the, the different issues and the local concerns, absolutely. Uh, for example, busing. Busing is a, a significant issue in many parts of this province. It's an issue here in Toronto, but it is essential in many parts of this province. And yet we still, we know now that uh, they have not invested in keeping uh, the number of students down on our buses, in proper PPE, in plexiglass to ensure that our workers are safe. Um, there are so many areas where this government has failed. Um, and one of the things they have done is to download every responsibility onto school boards without the, the actual funding to support what school boards are very clearly telling them they need. School boards across this province are saying, you have not given us enough to reduce the class sizes that we need to reduce. Uh, you have not given us the support we need to provide the additional support for teachers and students in our classrooms after such a traumatic event as a pandemic. So there are numerous areas where boards have been clearly calling for more. The government refuses to provide them with direction, uh, clear communication, funding. Uh, and again, I think wants to shirk responsibility here and download that responsibility onto school boards. Can I, uh, Stephanie, can I ask you a question about the potential triggering the election? Sure. Um, when you're making this decision about how to move forward, how do you balance any concerns you have about the ethical standards of the government versus the sort of policy goals that you hope to achieve in this process? Uh, a very fair question. At the end of the day, that, that is the question that we're, we're struggling with. Uh, we're going to continue to make that assessment. We look at uh, whether the federal government is um, is being caught up in helping itself, continue to be caught up in scandal where they're uh, effectively hurting families. And this, the, what we're in right now, is, in, is is largely a result of a liberal government that was more focused on itself, on on the scandals and the infighting, rather than something that they knew was going to happen: that schools are going to return, that there needed to be a federal role in supporting that return to school and that the federal government could play a really strong role in making sure those schools that return to school is safer. Uh, and now we're just, you know, uh, weeks away from school starting and we finally have, you know, forcing what looks like some announcement that's going to happen. But this should have happened uh, months ago and we've been calling for this for months. So that's the assessment we're going to make. We're going to look and see, can we continue to fight for people and continue to get some wins for people and make their lives better, make people safer? Can we continue to do that? Or uh, will the Liberal government continue to be caught up in helping themselves and in scandals? And if that's the case, then we're open to any option. Just a couple more for you. Yes. Um, is the, so you touched on this earlier, but if this is what's announced, the $2 billion the federal government is giving to provinces, is that enough? Would you support that? Uh, well, that it is a start. There, there's a couple pieces that, that we want to point out. One is uh, what uh, Mart Stiles has pointed out, is that we need to make sure that, that that announcement is tied to schools directly, that there's actually a commitment that, that that money is actually going towards making schools safer and that there's a plan in place. Uh, so far, uh, Premier uh, Ford has actually failed to put forward a plan in, in making sure that there's going to be a safer return to school. So there is no plan. Absent that plan um, and money from the federal government without a clear plan in place, there, there's still some serious problems for parents. Uh, the second piece is that we've, we've also said, along with... Um, schools being safer, parents really need to see access to childcare. That's vital. And so we've said that there needs to be at least, not just us, the experts in the field of, of childcare have said that there needs to be at least $2 billion this year alone to make sure we keep the amount of childcare spaces that we have just to put in place the extra protocols for safety for COVID-19. We need at least $2 billion. And then if we want to expand it, uh, we've said there needs to be $10 billion over the next four years. This is to address the problem where women have actually reduced, the, the participation of women has reduced so much that we've got to take that seriously. And what we've heard from families and from parents, particularly from women, is that without affordable childcare, without accessible universal childcare, they can't get back to work. This is a part of our economic recovery. So those are the two things that we're, that we're seeing as, as missing in, in this announcement. And we're hoping that the government hears us. I mean, it seemed to have worked yesterday when we made this announcement that they started moving. Hopefully and they're, they're listening to this press conference and we're asking for some real concrete steps to make school safer so that parents are, are confident and kids are safer. Can I just add to... Sorry, yeah, yes. Can I just add one brief point? Uh, I think it's important to... So um, we've been ready since July uh, to, to, to develop the best possible plan. Um, 
Yes, the, the provincial government should have had a better and more robust, rigorous plan earlier, but at this point, what we need most of all is for school boards to see that money flow as quickly as possible to reduce those class sizes, to, ha to have smaller, safer classes to keep kids safe social learning. We have everything we need in place to make the best possible plan under the conditions, but if the province slows that money down, if the province doesn't make sure that school boards can access that cash, put it to work as fast as possible for the safety of our kids and our teachers and our communities, then that would be the biggest failure of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So will you just, sorry, just run for Oh, sorry. I think there's going to be a follow-up for you guys. Yeah. It's okay, this is the dance that we play. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. So will your decision to support the government when Parliament returns be based on what you hear in the throne speech and the government's plan for the coming months? Or will it be based on a judgment of the ethics of the government? It'll be a combination. Yeah, it'll definitely be a combination. So we, we want to see what's in the throne speech for sure. We're not going to prejudge that. We want to hear what's, uh, what the government's commitment is to respond to COVID-19. We're also going to continue to pay close attention to what this government does in terms of whether they're continuing to help themselves, whether they're continuing to enrich their close friends, whether they're continuing to be infighting in a way that hurts Canadians. If they're, if they're saying nice things on one side, but they're continuing to fight amongst themselves and, and only want to enrich themselves or their close friends, then that's going to factor into our decision. So both are going to definitely be into our, uh, factor into our decision. Um, donc avec la décision de, de si on va appuyer le gouvernement ou non, on va évaluer ce que le gouvernement dit euh, dans le discours de Trump, mais en même temps on va évaluer aussi euh, les actes du gouvernement. Est-ce qu'il continue de, de s'attaquer eux-mêmes, s'il continue d'être euh, euh, bouleversé dans les, les scandales? Donc, euh, on va évaluer s'ils si ils continuent d'aider eux-mêmes au lieu d'aider les gens. On va faire une évaluation et puis décider si on va appuyer le gouvernement ou non. Avec tout le temps, le but, comment on peut aider les gens, comment on peut aider Monsieur, Madame, tout le monde. Parents are concerned, uh, elementary parents are very concerned about class size. Um, they want to see smaller classes for their kids. Um, they're concerned about ventilation, uh, water bottle filling stations. They're concerned about um, entries and exits and all of uh, the protocols that uh, we need to have in place. And I would say that one of the challenges we've had is that the, when the plan keeps changing, when the markers keep shifting, when more money comes or the parameters, uh, the rules are rewritten, every time that happens, we have to go back to the drawing board. So while we're grateful for improvements that have happened because of parent advocacy and teacher advocacy and education worker advocacy, the uncertainty and the shifting terrain uh, has caused delays in the planning process and has meant that we haven't gotten the level of detail um, that we need to be at at this point to give people the utmost confidence. So if we had had a plan in July that was principled and focused and well resourced, we could have all of that done right now and be really confident we built the best possible system. Instead, school boards are left scrambling at the 11th hour to try and put all the pieces together. And people are working around the clock to do that. And um, that's, that's what we're here to do. Uh, but it's disappointing. It's really disappointing. And parents are, are frustrated and they know, they know really clearly uh, where the fault lies right now. I don't anticipate. Uh, well, first of all, I don't really like love to answer answer hypotheticals, so. Uh, I can't say about the school year delay. At this point, we're directed to open school uh, on the 15th. So that, that start date is firm and fixed and the province really sets those parameters. The length of the school year and the school year calendar gets approved by the province. So we'll do everything we possibly can. 
And I think it's important to, to note too that while uh, we could have had a better start in September, we can make constant improvements, right? There's no, September is an inflection point, but it's not the end. And COVID is with us for a while. So we have to keep making those improvements and every level of government has to keep their, uh, we have to keep every level of government's feet to the fire on making sure that, uh, that we're uh, responding and evolving our systems as the circumstances around us demand. I, it's too early to say because it depends on the conditions that are put on that and I would say that's probably a question for the chair of the board and the director of education. Well, that's exactly why we were calling back in July for more money and space to keep kids safe social and learning in smaller class sizes because we know that parents are between many 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 parents are between a rock and a hard place they need to be working many workplaces are going to be returning in September even if they're not returning people need to be focused on their work and they need to keep their kids safe social and learning so it is a very 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 difficult uh, decision for a lot of parents we have lowered class sizes as far as the money that we've been provided and allowed to use uh, will get us. Um, we would uh, uh, relish the opportunity to get those class sizes lower with the teachers we have, with the space that we have, and we'll keep doing that work uh, as, long as, as long as we can and long as, as long as we have. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it.